seen it all Austin with kids being afraid of like certain games and drills. Um, but you'll find it funny that this summer I had a group of 10 year old girls uh, do wheelbarrow races. And it was like on the dirty grass and the grass was kind of like sharp because in Florida, it's like not that comfortable. And they were all complaining. Their hands were hurting. The parents were watching and the parents were really mad. We were doing wheelbarrow races because some girls were like dragging each other on the ground and they were so scared they were going to get hurt. And I was like, this is the problem. (laughs) We are training athletes to be scared of uncertainty and getting in uncomfortable positions, getting dirty, even like I it's, it's just so bizarre. And like you said, it goes much deeper than sports. Um, it goes into their relationships or their, their own health and well being and being scared of like sickness and disease and like bubble wrapping their lives. I mean, we saw it all during COVID, but it's, it goes so deep. I don't know if you've read the book, the coddling of the American mind, but it kind of just reminds me of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that book. And, and again, I, I I've seen the real life example too of I had a grandma and a grandpa. And my grandpa is the type to think like he is apps like to a fault thinks he's invincible. Like he's the dude that cut open his uh he was he was he's, he's like 72 and he was climbing trees because he's bored and he's climbing trees and he's cutting off branches and he cut himself with a chainsaw, didn't tell anybody came in for lunch because we forced him to come in for lunch because he was just going to keep working all day. Uh, and um, my mom saw that his uh, he had like um, long johns or like the leather. I'm blanking on the name, but leather um, overalls on basically. And she saw a cut through one of the overalls. And she's like, what'd you do there? She's like, oh, he's like, oh, I just nicked myself with the chainsaw. It's OK. She's like, what do you mean you just nicked yourself? And she's like, he needed 20 stitches. And like he didn't think anything of it, thought nothing and got it. Okay, so you have that dude that has been ingrained that he's invincible, probably to a fault for sure. But like, that's his mentality. Invincible, keeps going 72 climbing trees. And my grandma on the other side was told she was sick when she was young, told she's from a sick family, told she's always going to be sick, told she's going to die young. Um, She stopped moving. She stopped trying. She stopped believing in her body and her ability to heal. And she slowly degenerated into a point where she was taking 40 pills a day. Like they're married. These two are married. So it's like, you couldn't get any more like (laughs) close to each other of what this, what story this person was told and what story this person was told and how quickly they just completely spread out into two different pathways. And again, that happened, that started happening to her when she was 50 or 60. Okay. We are doing the same thing to kids when they are 13 years old, you know, I mean, even to the point of like, pills like man like the the amount of medications these they're just giving kids and i'm not a doctor but man it's like oh it is scary to see where it goes and and what happens from it and we're doing it because we're too busy or we're not paying attention to the words that we are saying to these kids and we're not paying attention to the long-term effects because we're always two steps removed the doctor the coach whoever it is anybody but basically the parent and sometimes the parents or they say something and they don't spend enough time around the kid to not be two steps removed from it. So doctor will say something, doctor will hand the kids something, coach will say something, coach will give a knee brace to a kid, whatever it is. And then they send that kid off and they never see that kid again or whatever it is. But that kid lives with that thought process for the rest of their life. Oh, I can't pay attention. Oh, something's wrong with my knee. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need that. And then you have the rest of their lives in that. And I know it works that way because I am a very stubborn person. And I'm a person that does not like authority and I do not like being told what to do. And when I was 16, I was told that I will never deadlift again. I will never squat again because of my back. Uh, I herniated a disc in my back. And that's the first thing a doctor told me. I met this doctor one time for 10 minutes and he's like, you herniated your disc and never squat again, never deadlift again. Just go home. Just it'll get better in like six ish months, uh, but never do those things again. And you'll be just fine. And your, your back space. And so like I, a person that is very stubborn, doesn't like authority. I believed that for the longest time. And now you have somebody that doesn't have the predisposition to basically be an asshole, to be stubborn, to not like, I I am getting sucked into this indoctrination as a 16 year old, because I should be able to trust authorities, I should be able to believe what they say. And it took me six to seven years to get out of that thought process and to fully believe that my body's capable and function, function the way that I want to do and I can deadlift and I can squat. And that was from a 10 minute conversation. And I'm a stubborn person. So you have somebody that is a little bit more 
they were born just a little bit more compassionate. They were born just a little bit more influenceable. They weren't born in a stubborn family like my family. You know, they they respect authority a little bit more. They're just born in that type of family. And they have that 10 minute authority. How long does that take that person to get out of those thought processes? So I've seen it, I've lived it, and I know it's very real. And I've seen the back end of getting an athlete out of those thought processes and just how much power and empowerment that gives that athlete. And I've seen it change lives change lives and i i think we're changing lives for the worse right now which is not a good thing